So here we are the night before the great event in between two of Belgium's finest. I'm a little bit uncomfortable right now in the golf club house because I'm a patriotic Welshman in between two Belgians and uh, a pair of them been eyeing my up. Nicholas Colsas to my right and Thomas Peters to my left. First of all boys, 3-1 um, to the Welsh. Did you watch the game? <laughs> Unfortunately, I, did, yeah. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> but all jokes aside, we're here in a dream for the uh, 45th Open Championship. How's been preparation for you guys? Well, I came from, well, we both came to the Scottish Open last week. Uh, so it's easy, it's just a drive down. Uh, you basically do your, your normal thing, it's not because you know, it's the open and all of a sudden you, get, you spend more hours, you know, the days are pretty long, uh, there's a lot of things to do, uh, there's a lot of things to look at, so you try to rest, you try to uh, uh, kind of get your energy uh, in the right place. Uh, coming Thursday, so that's why exactly we got to the club clubhouse on a Wednesday night. Thomas, you've been here uh, a number of days as well, yeah. looking at the course here in True. What's your thoughts on it, first of all? Um, it's been quite fair, I think. It's not going to be as windy as, uh, for example, last week we had at Scottish Open. So uh, greens are quite soft, like before, just before the green. It's not playing as a typical, really fast links uh, layout, I think. So I, I think we're going to see some low scores. When you go for the first tee tomorrow, what is your target score, as it were? Do you have a, a, a number in mind? I'm just going to try to hit the first fairway. It's quite <laughs> wide, but I'm just going to start with that one goal and then go from there. What's a goal for you over, this, over the next four days? Apart from winning, of course. Well, it's difficult to have any sort of prediction. You never know what the weather's going to be like. I mean, you look outside now, it's fantastic. But uh, if this uh, wet thing starts coming like this in your face, you know, it's a different ball game. Well, look at the weather forecast right now. It's sunshine and cloud for the next four days, but maybe high winds over the weekend, about 25 mile an hour cuts. So. Do you look at the guys? Look at the weather forecast. Anything on those lines, or do you just get on that first tee and just go for it? Well, yeah, you do, but it's it just changes so quickly. Uh, you just can't base yourself on it. I mean, uh, you would think like oh, the weather's going to be fine, and then you kind of put you know, high expectations, and you get out there and you hit a six iron ball in the yard. So uh, you know, there, you have to adapt to the elements, and it becomes a, a bit of a, a bit of a sport. You know, so. Uh, it's better not to look and just look up and see what, uh, whatever you get from there. The pundits have been saying on Sky and, and one or two others as well that this Open could be won and lost in the middle six holes between 7 and 13. You've been playing the course the last few days, yeah. would you agree with that? Oh yeah, for sure. I, mean, I think number 8 can make some really big leverage <laughs> on it. Um, it looks so easy from DB I bet, but it's, it's quite tough actually. Um, but you know, on that eighth hole, you just want to hit it front front edge, and then just take your two putts. Uh, but yeah, I mean, eleven's a really tough hole. Ten's a tough hole. So I think you make your score on the first six, seven holes, and then uh, you know, hold your score together. Let's look at that uh, post this time. 123 yards, par three. Yeah. When you look at some of the U.S. Open par threes, on nearly over 300 yards. Is it a way of looking at it that some golf courses should be designed more for these shorter holes because you guys do have a bit of a headache taking these on ones on? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, something this short, it's almost, yeah, it's, it's much tougher because when you have a 250 yard par 3, it's like, you got to smash through with that thing and go and find it. But this really makes you think and kind of, you know, those bunkers, they scare the hell out of you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is, this is old school golf, I think. And, you know, I prefer it this way. Is it a different approach, Nicky, when you come to an Open Championship compared to the regular tour events that you go to, but it's more part of the, when you come to an Open Championship setup, where you've got to run the ball in at times and, and uh, a judge for the bounce, does it, your mindset change when you arrive here to an Open Championship? Well, you get to play a different style of golf. Uh, I mean, Thomas and I, we played a lot of amateur events when uh, back in the day. You, you, you learn how to play this golf course throughout the years. Uh, it only happens like once or twice a year, unfortunately, because it's by far the funnest type of golf course to play on. Uh, but what's, like, cha what changes from this tournament to others is that you can chip from like a certain spot around a green to 30 feet and you get clapped. 
because it was basically the only show you could play and it's the only tournament in the world where that happens. One final question from me, what's the winning score going to be? Ooh, uh, say 12 under par. 12 under? Around about right for you? I'm thinking... Eight at most. What is that low? Alright, I'm winning well, I mean, by four then. Congratulations. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> so they... Yeah, I mean, it could be anything. If the weather's bad, yeah, it's not going to go any lower than six or eight. Tell them. So there you go. That's what Belgium's finest feel. My thanks to Nicky Colstas and Thomas Peters. Let's hope one of these two will be left in the cottage on Sunday.